kick it off and let us know who you are. Fantastic. So my name is Asia Gladden. I am a director of sales at a company in Atlanta called Oxblue. I also am a coach with Replace. 15 years collectively of sales experience. Love what I do, love to coach. I'm really looking forward to being here. Lovely. Amy. Yeah, so Amy Quick. I am a territory account manager for Coordinate. I cover Mississippi and Alabama. And um, yeah, same as Asia, I've been in sales for about 15 years. Um, I've kind of worn a lot of different hats. And now I am uh, selling actively in the SMB space for cybersecurity. So forward to uh, seeing what Josh brings forward today and uh, just being here with you guys. Awesome, Justin. My name is Justin Michael and uh, yeah, I am a sales futurist aspirationally. I also sell mobile technology and collect sunflowers and chickens. <laughs> Love it. Patrick, beat that. I'm not even going to try, man. I'm going to have like a plain introduction today. I know usually I'm going off about my other personalities and shit, but yeah, my name is Patrick Downs. I am a sales enablement practitioner and trainer at PandaDoc, a podcast host, mental health advocate, uh, and lover of sales feedback. So I'm very excited today. No eggs. Love it. Love it. All right. I'm Francois Bordeaux. I'm with Encore Business Solutions. We're a Microsoft partner. And uh, I work with these other crazy folks uh, getting this going on Fridays and it's lots of fun. So Josh, we're going to hand it over to you, man. The floor is yours. Um, you got, you know, a little less than an hour, but uh, let's, let's uh, see how we can help you, man. And maybe, maybe you can help us. Yeah, sounds good. So you did it. I see you disabled screen sharing. So if you could oh, enable no, let me, screen let me, sharing, that would let be good. Let me put that back on right here, right here. Uh, there we go. Boom. All right, cool. So uh, my name is Josh Wagner. I am an account executive with a company called VMD. We're a professional services consulting company. So one of the challenges that we have in our business is we've been in the marketing automation space for over a decade. So we're very well known in that space. And we were, in fact, one of Marketo's, their, their first professional services partner. So we get very much pigeonholed into that arena. And as we've grown over the past decade, our business has grown into, and you'll see this as we go through this, some of the slideware, but we've grown into three core practices that surround all of the dependencies that really make marketing automation work. Things like your go-to-market strategy, other technologies and data infrastructure, and then the overall revenue operation landscape. So one of the biggest challenges we have as an organization is not getting pigeonholed into that. Someone makes me a referral, hey, my marketing automation system is broken, can you fix it? Well, I don't want to solve that problem per se. I want to solve the bigger problem that surrounds the, the symptomatic issue that's happening in marketing automation, right? That typically is a lot of different things. And you'll see as we go through this, the feedback that I'm looking for is, does the approach that we're taking here help solve, just help, help up-level that conversation? And again, that's going to matter who you're talking to, right? Like if I'm talking to the marketing automation manager, the likelihood of me getting out of that is very tough. But if my audience is a CMO, a vice president of marketing, a CRO, whatever it may be, which I'm typically aiming for, I want to make sure that this approach is getting out of the symptom that they might be feeling in marketing automation and up into some of the other dependencies that we might be able to help them solve that will trickle down and fix that problem. Does that make sense? Totally. So you'll walk us through uh, your deck. Do you want you want um, like real time feedback, or do you want to kind of wait till it, it wraps? Uh, engage with me uh, as much as you can. So I am going to make a few assumptions. I'm going to assume that you've either had a call with myself or a biz dev person, okay. right? And I've gathered minor level information, right? And we'll go through what that looks like. So if we look at the slides here agenda that we're going to set for the call today. We'll do a quick round of introductions. We've obviously already done that, so we'll make that quick. We'll do a quick recap of what we know and validate anything we may be missing. We'll run through some scenarios of where we've seen this before and see if that might resonate with you. And then ultimately, we want to have some discussion, right? I want to make sure that it's not just me talking to you, but you having some discussion with me and making sure that there is a fit. And if there is some level of fit right now, we align on what those next steps look like. 
Does that sound fair to everybody? 100%. Good. Okay. So we've already gone through introductions. I'm not going to ask you to do it again. We'll skim through that. But based on what we know now is you've already done a lot of work to date in Marketo, which is your marketing platform. So we're not starting from scratch. We're also not looking to blow up the good work that you've done. We want to enhance and mature. You've got a global organization, so we need to advance that maturity globally across the platform. But there are some areas of regions of the world that are doing well and are up at this level while others are lagging behind. So we do need to bring parity to what people are doing globally. And one of the symptoms that you're seeing from a lot of this is you recently went through a sync with your salesforce.com environment. There are some sync issues. Want to dive into that and make sure that you know, that key dependency for a marketing automation system like Marketo is being resolved. Anything else that you can think of that's being misrepresented or that you want to make sure we talk about? And again, I know you all don't necessarily have all the context, but I know some of you have been in this space. If you have anything you want to just throw out there, hey, blah, 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 let's do it. Well, I'll start by asking, need to advance maturity globally and get all global workspaces to parity. Those are really, really high level, lofty, very encompassing topics. How are yep. they going to get, like, how are we going to hone in on that? Because I would be maybe on this slide here, I would have been a little bit more specific to, like, what the point of this call is. And unless this is to kind of cover, like, more theoreticals and hypotheticals on how you're helping in, as a whole the industry. Yeah, that's fair. With? Yeah, so that's a good question. And a lot of what this is covering is capability, right? So I will, this specific example, I was introduced at the marketing automation manager level and worked to get level up from that. So global vice president of marketing and then regional and their regions are globally, regional global marketing managers, right? So they didn't have the context of our first conversation. So now I'm trying to say, hey, this is what I heard from your marketing automation manager who's running all this stuff here in the North America. How do we fit into that? And where can we help expand that conversation? So yes, you're right. Those are very broad topics. And oftentimes I tend to start very broad. Um, to try to get people thinking bigger, but I understand where you're coming from. No, I was just curious for the sake of this call, like what, you know, where we, what, what shoes we were, we were sitting in, what roles we were sitting in. So that makes sense. Does it? Yeah. I mean, if it's, this is kind of like more of a broad high level topic and then getting down to the granular as you go along. Okay. Perfect. That works for me. Anything else? What is meant by advanced maturity globally? And where on the globe? Well, when you talk about it, yeah. So essentially they sell, they're, they're a product driven company. They have a lot of different industry segments that they sell those products into and they sell them all across the globe. So they have deployed a marketing automation installation in this case, Marketo. They had North America up to a certain place and the rest of the globe isn't up to that level of maturity. That's the parity piece. But even North America itself isn't to the maturity level that, where they want to be. So think of getting everyone to parity and then taking that next maturity jump as a, as a whole. I think if you yeah. explain it like that, when you touch on that bullet point, it'll be money. Okay. Fair enough. So why do we start with marketing performance? And the simple answer is we're, we call ourselves a marketing performance consultancy. But when you think about traditional marketing, you know, we've all heard the four P's, product price, place, promotion, and play, um, pricing, product price, place, promotion. Yeah, I got it. The fifth P in our world is performance, right? And what does performance marketing mean? Well, that ultimately means that we are in sync and we are tying ourselves to the revenue engine, right? Sales and marketing need to be one unit. Marketing needs to be in collaboration, constant collaboration with our counterparts in sales to ensure that we are tracking, measure, measuring, and tying ultimately the 
outcomes that marketing produces to the objectives of the business, right? And that's why we think of everything through that lens of performance marketing. And what often happens is there's all these dependencies in marketing. We talked about the sales dependency. If you're talking about a marketing platform like Marketo, there are all sorts of tendencies for the success of that platform to work. But what happens is those dependencies don't wind up syncing up with one another. So you get this ping pong ball effect, right? And the things that you're doing, and we're not ever saying that you're doing bad work, but the work that you're doing may not be in a straight line alignment to the objectives of the organization. They may not be in a straight line alignment to the objectives of your sales counterparts, you know, whatever that may be. So we want to be able to tell a different story because what all that's leading to is these are industry stats that you've probably all seen in some level or another, but marketing leads aren't converting to revenue. We're spending more on technology and we don't know how to produce an ROI. And probably the scariest of all is marketing leaders don't know how to present a tangible business outcome to the rest of the C-suite, to the board. And this is a fundamental problem and you're seeing it in the, the CMO by half at least as the shortest tenure in the C-suite. This all leads up to what we call random acts of marketing and ultimately what we're trying to solve, even when we're thinking of something as simple as an installation and advanced maturity on a platform like Marketo. And it's not going to get any better. In fact, it's going to get worse because overall revenues, and this is a pre-COVID stat, but take it for what it's worth, right? Overall revenues are being invested more and more in marketing. So that trend isn't slowing down. We need to ensure that if we're going to put more dollars into that engine, there is some way to translate that to the CFO, the CEO, and potentially the board down the road. It needs a new approach, a new approach that aligns all those clear dependencies and does align to performance and real results. And that's a simple taking all those ping pong balls that we saw on the slide before, making sure they're drawing a straight line to the outcomes that we're producing into those objectives. And that for us is supported by three core practices, right? The three core pillars in those core practices, the go-to-market strategy, which every organization has to have at some level. There's also revenue operations, the end-to-end, -end, making that revenue machine work, tying sales and marketing together through our data systems and technology and the technology and data practice, right? So those three practices that we do help us look at anything that we're doing in marketing, even if it's a technology implementation like Marketo or optimization, through a holistic lens. And we brought that all together under what we call the catalyst marketing framework. And it really does bring all those three practices together and starts to highlight the approach of dependency. So when we talk about Marketo and Salesforce having sync problems, if you look in this framework here and go bring your eye all the way to the right in the middle and you see system stack implement optimize. Well, essentially what you're trying to do is implement or optimize your Marketo and Salesforce environment. Well, what are all the dependencies to make that happen? Well, something very critical in that, in a Marketo Salesforce think is the idea of a life cycle. Well, a life cycle in that sense is a very operational thing, but big picture, it represents your buyer journey. Well, your buyer journey is represented by your buyer personas. Your buyer personas is represented by your audience segmentations and your account profiles. So as you see, we're starting to spread out into the strategic components of the framework. This all drills down into that one sy symptom that you might be feeling. So double clicking into that, the Marketo implementation framework, think of a double click into that system optimized, brings in those core dependencies from the catalyst marketing framework and gives you a lens into how they apply to that specific system. At the end of the day, the first three pillars we're either going to assess them to understand what you're doing today so that we can translate it and build it into the system, or we're going to assess it to not only understand, but provide a gap analysis and design a better solution to then translate that into your system and technology. So that was probably a good three and a half to five minute rant. And that's a lot of me talking at you. I'm trying to look at head, heads nodding, but- I was gonna ask, um... And I don't remember, I think it was two slides back, but you talked about those three pillars uh, before you drilled in mm -hmm. yeah, prior to this. Right. So, because I think this, then the next one gets, you know, deeper. But can you help me understand it? This, like on this slide, is this where you find, um, and maybe I missed this at the beginning, but do you find even at this slide, some people pigeonhole you into like, we only thought you guys do one piece of this or a sliver of this? 
Yes. So this is an awareness play, right? To say that, oh, we got very, our typical referral is going to come through the revenue ops one in the middle. Okay. Right. Okay. So this is a very blunt force way to say, we don't just do revenue ops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then when you drill into the next one and show like a lot of stuff, um, yep. all that stuff in the middle again, maybe what they're thinking in the next slide, but you're trying to, sure. you know, but you're, you're just trying to show, look, this is the depth and breadth that we can bring. Yeah. So what I think this does well is it kind of frames all of the components in, in a marketing go to market world that you might have. It also represents the services we offer. So that's nice. What I don't think it does super well is the talk track around dependency which is the thing that I want to highlight the most, right? I want to highlight that you can't just go fix your Salesforce and Marketo sync. It's dependent on a bunch of other things, right? You can't just, oftentimes technology gets plugged in and implemented, right? If you look at this slide here, the typical implementation just falls into those last two pillars, right? And nobody takes the time to translate their buyer personas as an example to a data model that then lives in their marketing platform and it's actually usable. Right. Buyer personas, you know, live in a box folder or I've seen them as cardboard cutouts in a, in a lobby, but nobody actually operationalizes those in any tangible way. That's our goal is to translate go to market strategy into your systems and then support it by your people. Right. So, gosh, I think that, um, I mean, I, I like I like this particular slide. I mean, I still think it's a little a wordy. Like the last slide was like probably way too much to read in a demo. And so what we found is that you were talking and you had some relevant points that you were making, but I was trying to read the screen. Um, and it was mm -hmm. distracting what you were saying. And I think that we have a tendency sometimes in demos to put up really verbose screens. And then we're also talking through them. And whether that's like we're actually saying the text that's on the screen or like going off and kind of building out our own kind of use case or story that we're telling. Um, I think if you were to take that last screen and even this screen and get rid of most of the words, which you can provide them this, um, this particular slide and the last one, which are very, uh, there's a lot of information there, which is really interesting. And as a buyer, I would like to see all of this stuff mapped out in like a white paper or something like that, that, that could follow on from this or even be, a, you know, a preemptive send, you know, some of that value that you send them before they even get on this call. But on, for the sake of the presentation, I would get rid of most of this wording and create more of a, a graphic for us just to look at while you're talking. And on the three pillars screen um, that Francois was talking about, that would have been a really great point for you to pivot to like starting to ask questions about, you know, where is, where are they striving? You probably already know this maybe if you've done some discovery, but what, what is their focus? Like out of the three pillars, where are they being drawn to more that they have pains or they've got gaps in their process? And then the rest of this demo, you can really build, like Patrick will say, it's like pulling the thread. It's chasing that, that thread, right? And drilling down on that pain as you kind of lead them through this demo so you can see if, if they're getting stuck on the planning stage of their process, you're going to spend a little bit more time there talking about how you work up to solving that pain for them in that problem. Because this is a very comprehensive system, but I think maybe narrowing the focus down for the sake of whoever's on the call and what their immediate pain is, is going to help you convert that to like the next conversation. And I don't know, just my two cents on that. Guys, what do you, what do you kind of yeah, think no, about that? I totally agree with you. Uh, I'll add one other thing and then I'll, I'll let Deja or Patrick or, or Justin jump in. But back to that, um, the first three pillar slide, if you feel that people are getting, if you feel that people are pigeonholed into thinking lead MD is the green revenue operations one, I think what would be interesting is if you took this as an opportunity to tell them, you know, we often see people coming to us for the, the middle piece and then mm -hmm. give some analogies of why, you know, you end up going to the left and to the right and how you've helped people there and why there's a good story. Um, and I think you can, you can touch on all the pieces that are in the, the next slide, but they're like, like Amy was saying, you know, human nature is we're just gonna, we're just gonna look at all those icons versus, you, you know, mm -hmm. there's probably a, there's probably a use case that you can dig up 
of, you know, somebody came in and we helped them with the blue or the purple. Um, I think that that'll keep their attention. And also, you know, then you can, you can do the old reverse of like, we solved this, does this sound familiar, um, you know, type of strategy. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. So typically where we're, we're trying to find is even while we're trying to open the door to bigger picture conversations, we all, we are also at the same time trying to set an anchor point, mm -hmm. right? Because nobody's ever going to, you know, bite off on everything. Right. But we do want to set that expectation that this isn't just a system problem, right? That may be, you know, how you were referred over, but even if there is that anchor point that we can set to your point to say, yeah, okay. Revenue operations is here. Did you know that these are two other things and, you know, telling that story. I like that concept of using this to even say people come in here, here's a story of someone who came in here and the work we wound up doing to solve X, I think could be really nice here and even um, put, put in before that framework or that framework could be a follow on type of thing. So I think that's really yep. solid. Same conversation today with a partner that, you know, was trying to figure out what we do. Like they had no idea that we did anything on networking at all. They just thought we were like a security company. Mm -hmm. And so I, I yep, had exactly. that I was like, hey, security is great. Like, that's our bread and butter. You can start out with, like, this, this piece and then add these on. And that's a foot in the door, and we'll always take a foot in the door any day of the week. But we do cover all of these other things. And in our conversation with our customer, we need to feel out where that all comes into play strategically. So get the foot in the door, and then those conversations roll out organically from there. Because, essentially, if they can purchase a multi faceted solution from you guys that covers X, Y, and Z and solves pain one, two, and three and get it probably for a cheaper price point than they would going with three different separate vendors or building out some internal process, then that value is so easy to sell at that point. It's like the return on investment is just like, it's just there. It's like, this yeah. makes sense. All of these things happen and you save money and you do, you know, you'll see this benefit from it. So. But I like that. So let me, let me ask you, yeah, let me ask you then, Amy, if we're, so that concept is here, right? This is that story, right, of building a center of excellence for a product-driven company, right? So this is a product-driven company we're talking about. They have same marketing platform. They are global. And we wanted to talk about that concept of the solution. So potentially going through those three practices, the idea, most people come to us here, just like you are. Oftentimes it sprawls into these other two practices. Here's an example of that. Then talk about center of excellence, how that maps to a global organization. What's the difference between a center of excellence in the marketing platform and a performance marketing center of excellence, how that spans out. Moving this story up, does that sound like we're, we're saying the same thing? Yeah, I think um, to be completely honest, I think dumb it down, just dumb it way down and get to the core fundamentals of, because this uh, is like, I think that, that sometimes we have a tendency to kind of, there, you could do so much to help them, but we can almost overcomplicate it in our delivery. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's like this slide right here that I'm looking at, it's like, oh, this is cool. Yeah, but if I was a C-level, I'd be like, all right, can we be done? Because it you just you just got to nail them on what you're going to solve and not necessarily so much of like the broader, bigger picture. Because the VPs and the executives, they don't care. Come in there and tell them how you're going to solve their problem, what kind of an return on investment you're going to get them, how you're going to align all of these departments and all of, you know, especially like a CMO. You brought up earlier nailing how they have the shortest tenure in their role. Like, mm. you're a CMO. I'm talking about that all day long because that's their main, you know, probably the, the, the thing that drives them and keeps them up at night. So, um, but I, I do right. like this. It's of excellence. It's cool. I think there's a, there's a place for it. So, but I'll let everyone else talk to you. I'm, I'm talking. <laughs> I'll shut up. <laughs> Asia, we, um, we, we go, Asia, I know you're dying to get to the Georgia mountains, but I, I want to hear. Uh, I want to. Yeah, hear I want to hear from Asia. I have so much to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, Justin's winding up. So my question is this: 
you're, to, to make sure I have a clear understanding, um, you come into the conversation with them, they think you're marketing automation, you want to present the idea that you're not just marketing automation, automi automation you're all these other things as well. That, that's our goal, right? Uh, yes, we're, to be clear though, we're not marketing automation, right? Like, well, that's one of the biggest challenges in, in our- For the marketing automation piece, you want to put them in, push them in this direction and give them this broader understanding of the things that you do. Yeah, our biggest goal is to highlight that the system is rarely the problem. It's the input into the system that are the problem. Okay. So yeah, I, I do agree that these parts should come a little bit higher in the process. Totally agree on simplifying the, some of the slides, but leading with what you're trying to say rather than working your way into it, six, seven, eight slides in just seems to make more sense to me. I'm also wondering how much a discovery into what they're expecting in the call happens before this presentation actually happens. Well, this example is, is certainly nuanced, as is everything in our business, right? We don't sell a product. We're, we're not, I don't have a demo to, to give you, right? And mm -hmm. this is one of the biggest challenges when you sell consulting or services is at the end of the day, what am I going to get is what the CMO does ask every single time, right? You can tell all the great stories you want, but it does come down to if I'm paying you, what am I going to get? Which is why oftentimes we do land on an anchor point like, okay, I need to get global parity in my Marketo instance. I need to get my connection fixed, blah, 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 blah. Well, all the work that we're going to put in, at the end of the day, you're going to have this tangible thing that lives as a center of excellence, a center of excellence that lives in your platform, a center of excellence that your company follows as a marketing performance a, a, a piece of the business. So that's bring, trying to bring some tangibility to something that is not tangible. At the end of the day, we sell time, right? We sell people, we sell their time, we sell expertise. So I can't demo a, a security platform. I can't demo, you know, anything like that. So I have to bring forward a story and then bring some tangibility to that story. So to me, what, what makes sense, and I'd love to get everybody else's take on this, but to me, what makes sense is, is leading with that scenario of where you want to be, something along this and then telling the story of how you get there. If I've got to sit through a whole story to get to the end, but I don't, I didn't really come into the conversation for this, I'm not gonna be as impatient, as patient as if you grab me with this perfect state first and then tell me how to get there. Hmm. That's interesting, I like that. I do kind of like the utopia aspect of it. Like just hit them right up front with the this is the utopia of what we want to do for you kind of thing and then lead them through. Is that what you're saying, Asia? That is exactly what I'm saying. If, if you start with, in this scenario, you start with a perfect state. I'm, I'm at that point, I'm engaged. I want to know how to get this. And then you tell me the story of how you get there and how you guys make that happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like that. Mm. Yeah, I will tell you that this is not a natural motion for me my natural motion is to just dig in and start asking questions same <laughs> and let the questions do the selling for me but oftentimes you get into this situation with a referral of like dude who the fuck are you and why are you just asking me a bunch of what like who are you and what do you do right like before you start just diving into discovery and that's what we've run into so you know we're admittedly working our way through this pitch, so to speak, of how do we get people to understand who we are and what we do if someone's not ready to just like jump right in? Because I, I've definitely gotten that feedback for like, dude, you're just like, you're, you're jumping in. Like you're asking me these questions about my business. I'm not sure I'm ready to tell you because I don't have the context of who you are and what you do. So that's, that feedback is great, right? Like start with the perfect state and then how we get there. I think that's, that's fantastic. Justin, I know you're dying to uh, Unreal. Yeah, so I really appreciate that feedback, Asia. Um, yeah, so I think it's, it's interesting, right? So you've, you've stood in front of enough CMOs now, probably, Josh, that you've built this in a way to almost pre-handle objections. And uh, <laughs> so I think that's really positive. 
Um, one of the things you're doing very well is you are walking through something on the screen by not reading it. So you, you hit a home run there because what you can't do is present a PowerPoint and read the screen. So actually, in a way, I do like having, you know, you're kind of riffing and then they're following along because it creates engagement for me where I'm kind of looking. Some of the slides are a little bit of an eye chart or marching ants. And I feel like they roll up nicely, though, if you were to take the smaller fonts off and just leave the same buckets and then, you know, because it, it just jumps way out. A, a lot of this is formatting, though, like the Performance Marketing Center of Excellence, that's People Process Systems, right? Marketo Center of Excellence. Um, the other slide that had the different processes. I think it's super strong. And then you talk about it and maybe you tease out the stuff that's in fonts on the call. But maybe you don't have time. I know I like what you just said. Maybe you don't need a deck at all. You know, maybe it's just the conversation and this is phase two. But um, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, that's my in, immediate first impression. But then I would ask, I don't know your business as well as you, and it's selling services. So what is the usual reaction to each slide that you've already walked us through? Can you take us through a, a simulation of that? Yeah, for sure. Um, so again, in this particular example, the influencer, the practitioner is introducing me to her bosses, right? And she's very you know, she's got that, like, this is what they need to know, blah, 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 right? So some of it is teed up for that specific audience and, and what she's asked to be presented. But then I'm also not, I'm not the one to do what someone tells me to do. I do what I want to do. So I'm bringing that out a couple of extra levels just because I, I don't want to just get stuck in where she wants me to get stuck. That's not my goal. Yeah. Um, so typical reactions, I'll, I'll give you some, a, a few here. Let me get back in here and click back. So I'll start here just like because that's a busy is... slide, but, but I don't know what I don't know. You've been in business a long time. You're crushing consulting. Like I can learn from you on this pitch as much as it is jarring from my worldview. Right? So you show someone this, it's like a loom escape. They might feel overwhelmed, but maybe that overwhelm is the point. And then you come rescue them. <laughs> yeah. I do have a sense of you all are reading it because you're seeing the conceptually for the first time versus a CMO who's like, boom, that's marketing. I've never seen it all put together like that, which is a very common yeah, response. That, that, I could, you know what would be really kind of cool is if you took this and you were able to do some automation on this and you were to say, like, here's everything that a marketing team and a sales team even has to focus on. Mm -hmm. um, and then you take it and you just, like, disappear it all and, like, just yeah. leave the points and it's like we take care of all of this we can help you with all of this so just look at how effective it would be if all of these things that you're responsible for every day were simplified you know i don't know like yeah. someone kind of visually like take them show them how you can release the the tension and the pain and stuff because i'll put it to you this way you know i'm i'm a new rep right starting out in a ter brand new territory and there's all kinds of process, sales process issues. We're kind of, our BDR team and our sales team isn't actually very old, like four or five years old. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of process and a lot of, you know, planning and strategy and things that I can see here that I'm doing myself, right, as a sales rep. Um, and if yeah. I were to align myself with an organization that could come in and help alleviate some of that and streamline it in a way um, that would be phenomenal. So if you could like graphically show them how, you know, I don't know, just give them a paint a picture of like the utopia, like Asia was saying. Um, I think that would be huge because I love this slide. I think that as a an informational slide to show them, like we do all of these things. Like we have a we have one for Fortinet that's like end to end, right? It shows all the stuff we do. Sure. And I like that slide, but I wouldn't necessarily want to like show it in a demo because it's too much. It's almost too much to sure. uh, yeah. keep up there for, you know, talking points, but I do like it. I, I think even if you know the industry, I, I think it's a human reaction. Just getting hit with a slide with this much on it just makes you tense, you know? Yeah. So the idea of then, I love Amy's idea of it kind of somehow transitioning into what you do where all of this becomes simplified and it, it drives the point home and it, it's a mental thing as well. Like, ah, 
you know, you, you relax a little bit because what you're looking at becomes simpler and that tells the story in itself. Does that make sense? Maybe you all can help me with the concept behind the visual that we need, because I do, it makes, a, it makes sense. Yes. Because Thank you for being open, Josh, I know we're kind of like, you know, slaughtering the sacred cow here and trying to derail your work. No, not view. at all. Because this bothers me, right? Like it, the same way, like what am I, what's the story I'm trying to tell and how do I make it easy for someone to consume? So really the concept that I think we need to somehow visually portray to a buyer, and this goes exactly what you're saying, Asia, is make it, make it a little bit more linear, right? Than, than all of this. On one hand, every company has a go-to-market strategy. You're not going to talk to a CMO, a CRO, a CEO, whatever. They're not going to just like, oh, we don't have one, right? They have one. It may not be perfect, but they have one. On the other hand, every organization is doing something in the market. They're running ads. They're sending emails. They're making phone calls. They're doing events, you know, whatever it may be. Tactics are happening, right? There's all this stuff in the middle where the translation of the go-to-market strategy to the in-market tactics gets lost. And it's all the people process technology, right? It's the stuff that we really excel in. It's, to your point, Amy, creating a sales process that everybody rallies and aligns around. It's getting the, what content do I send at this stage of the buyer journey mapped out? It's how do I go into my system and execute this thing. You know what I mean? It's all of that people process tech in the middle, but it's that translation layer between go-to-market strategy and tactics that we really excel in. What's the visual that's not all this crap that helps tell that story? I bet Patty, Patty D has answer for this. Do I? Maybe. I'm throwing you under the bus, though. I don't. I don't have anything. <laughs> I appreciate that, though. I like the Katane facts. However, thank you, like Justin. I like to put Tawny Katane facts. It's an inside joke, but one uh, episode, Patrick was Tawny Katane. Um, so you know how on uh, PowerPoint you can do like a slide flow? What you could do is pull off the, the detailed areas and then just do a fade. So first it just shows the Catalyst Framework strategy planning tactics technology data talent change management and then fade and then it adds a layer of text and then it adds a layer of text so just it slowly fades them in really simple tactic mm -hmm. but just simplification overall of your deck and I, I i get concerned on like the gong chorus stuff like what is your typical listen to talk ratio with the clients or have you already done a discovery session where they're maybe talking half the time or you're just you know, really drilling down into pain points and unraveling it, or are these the slides that unravel it? Yeah, so I would, this call had discovery prior, right? This, this, this presentation had, had discovery prior. And again, I'm, I'm presenting and opening the door to a new audience here. So people that don't know us and we're not the, the catalyst for the referral, right? This, this person trying to get, and, and every situation is a little bit different. Um, if you look at any of our course recordings, you know, when we're in discovery mode, we're, we're way less than 50% talking. It's not, it's not our mode as consultants. That's just not what we do. Um, and then, so, hey. Justin, I'll be honest hey. with you. I've been fighting my CEO for 10 years or five years that I've been there, six years that I've been there. He's always wanted us to use a deck. And I said, I don't use a deck. I, I, I don't want to use a deck. Part of the reason why I wanted to have this call. Um, it's not the way I sell, but uh, God, I've been doing it just to, to make him happy. Yeah, go ahead. I was thinking about like how to simplify this, right? I, I totally hear you on like the deck thing. Um, I, I would not use one if I didn't have to. I mean, I would just have a conversation and I feel like you get so much totally. more out of it. And um, when you have a, like, it, it makes sense if you're trying to explain high level to an executive and you can flash some slides and ask some questions and keep that executive telling you, feeding back to you, what problems does he have or she has that you need to solve? And just keep like, sure. Patrick, great point all the time. It's like, just pulling that thread. And why is that a problem for you? And how does that impact your team? And, you know, just asking these yeah. real questions as you're showing a more simplified deck. But what I would say is like, you know, you, like you asked, like how you could simplify these slides. What, 
if you if you were to walk into my office and I was a CMO and you needed to tell me in like three minutes what you could do or how LeadMD solves a problem, what would you say? It's typically going to be the impetus for, you know, it's going to be finding that anchor point, right? Because there are so many different problems that we solve. That's one of the biggest challenges in our business is just taking that. But if you use this example, right, like someone has marketing automation, it's going to be, you've likely, if you're an enterprise organization, which the majority of our customers are, it's, you've likely invested well over six figures in marketing automation. It's sending emails and you could spend $20 a month to send emails. So why did you invest in that platform and what are you looking to really get out of it? Cause that rep sold you a dream that someone bought off on. We're going to bring that dream to reality. Yeah. That's, I mean, I, what I would encourage you to do because this helped me astronomically in selling a very complicated product suite and solution. That's not easy to explain all the time because there's so many moving parts and pieces. But a couple weeks ago I had to three minute pitch my, the, the director of sales for Fortinet. And I was like, oh my God, mm -hmm. this is going to be insane. But I had to figure out, out a way to take everything that we do, all right, and simplify it into a three minute value pitch. And sure. for me, I learned more about how to communicate the product I sell in that exercise, which I waited to the last minute to do. But it taught me so much about how to communicate that strategically at a very high level in just a couple minutes. And you could take that and build on it so that when you're getting in front of an executive and you've got, you know, some slides, some high level slides to show, you've got your solid value pitch where you can tell them right up front. Like it doesn't matter what the pain is necessarily at that point. You can just tell them like, this is what we do. This is the value we're going to bring. These are the problems we're going to solve. Most of our customers are experiencing these problems. This is how we solve them. This is the value that we bring as a result of solving them. And in three minutes, I was like, okay, oh my gosh, I thought I was going to die. But it helped me just align myself with how to communicate. Um, and I think that you, like, you know what you do um, better than anyone. So I think that maybe on some of these slides, you build out like, you know, a 30 second, like just value prop, right. And keep that executive's attention on you and why there's value in him and in, in him or her sitting across from you continuing this conversation and driving, you know, lead MD in a direction that that's going to end up with procurement. So, um, I don't know. That's just, that's my take on this because I feel like, um, if you've gone through discovery, you've gotten to the point where this is an introduction to an executive. Um, you have such a limited window of time with them. And it's so like, I love getting high level and talking about like the business side of things, which is great because that's what they want to talk about. But you also kind of have to get them up to speed on lead MD and kind of what you've shared already with the, right. you know, your, with your champions, right? Because they kind of sat through presentations but from right. a higher I think it needs to be succinct, just boom, boom, boom. This is what we do. This is what we can do for you. These are the problems we solve. And you can kind of map it all back to what you already know from discovery. But I think that that would probably serve you really well. And then doing like what Justin said, having a like this slide, for instance, where you can just disappear it all and say, so basically, this is the ideal utopia. You know, this is what we want your, well, how we want to simplify your marketing process or your you know, your whatever, your pillars that you want to talk about. Um, I don't know. I think that might be kind of a cool strategy to get to this where it shows like, you know, more of a, more of an ideal scenario and what you can't, what you will do for them. Does that make sense? Did I kind of ramble on those one, three minutes? It makes sense there, you know, in my, in my view, there needs to be a stable of things that you can, fall on in every scenario, right? Like there's no reason to ever go through all of any of this, right? Mm -hmm. I, I'm kind of throwing them all at you just to get reactions like this, to be honest. So there's, especially in my world, like when I sell without a deck, I'm going to listen and then I'm going to react with, oh, well, guess what? Such and such company that looks just like you came to us this in, you know, two years ago to do this and guess what, two years later, this is what we're doing. And this is how we got there. Like that's how yeah. I would sell without a deck. 
it's articulating those, and that's what I've done for six years here, right? It's articulating those things and having them in your hip pocket for that session, right? So like you said, using your discovery, I've got a stable of 25 slides that tell those five stories. And then, oh, well, yeah, when I tell that story, being able to show some sort of visual, what we do a bad job of a company is very simply visualizing a complex concept. Yeah. Which is why I asked the question, how do I tell that translation story of we translate strategy to tactics through people, process, and technology? How do I visually represent that in a, in a more impactful way? What so I can talk slides? to it. I mean, slides. I mean, I have a couple more after this. Or how many slides do you have total on this? Uh, this is just delivery methodology, how we get to where we're going. Uh, this is an example. This is engagement formats, projects, and retainer. Uh, this is, you know, essential outcomes that we can help work on together. Oh, uh, and then just action plan. And um, sorry to dive in again. So to Asia's point, so if I come to lead MD and I've spent six figures on my marketing stack, what are the outcomes? Like, how am I going to tie investing in your services to improving my marketing stack? What is the financial outcome? by a pure ROI, return on investment in you. How are you optimizing my stack? How are you helping me consolidate? Where I'm looking for qualitative and quantitative stories of success and case studies, maybe from the front, but maybe yeah. you've discussed that already in Discover. You said it out loud and you said not to use the deck, but like, it was kind of like what Asia said, is like, you know, current state, future state, this is where you want to be sell the dream and then like walk them toward that. And I would love to hear more from others on the call. Sorry to grandstand. No, I like that. And that's totally right. Right. Like you have to be able to paint that picture of, you know, whether it's a leaky funnel and, you know, cause CEOs, executives love leads, right? Like it's their favorite thing in the world. It's, it's like the pre it's the pre cash register ringing. So if you're saying your marketing department is, is producing, 5,000 leads a month, but you've got a lead to win rate of, of 1%, which is super common, right? Well, there's a leaky funnel problem. How are we solving that problem? Well, our stack may not be, our process may not be optimized. You may not have a playbook to align marketing and sales. You might have good, not good definition alignments and all of that stuff needs to feed into your system, right? So if you plugged in this system so it can send emails and track cookies, great but you didn't put your buyer personas in, they're not represented by a data model. You didn't align your sales process to your buyer, to your buyer journey. You didn't, you know what I mean? You didn't do all of those things. Now say our lead to conversion ratio goes from five. We, we don't change anything, but you know, 1% to 5%. Now what's that tangible ROI model, right? Like, so it's an overly simplified back of the napkin ROI model, but that's the type of stuff that I'm typically walking people through. What about a boat with like, a million holes in it and that's your graphic and it's just pouring water uh -huh. out and come along and like just slap like lead <laughs> like your logo just all over it just fill all the holes like that would be a really funny visual so like a really yeah. no, like realistic boat not like a cartoon boat <laughs> right <laughs> well and, and, and like, you know, i gotta get an animator we focused a lot on the you know the, the screen with all that info but i think like It'd be interesting to show like a typical current state that you see and you could, you know, blur out a bunch of these things or put red X's or whatever you want to do to visually say like, this is a typical, like I, ha I have a deck in some uh, scenarios I go to with a customer where I say, you know, I I'm pretty sure this is your current state, like you're missing all these pieces and there's like duct tape holding them together. This is the future state. It's very shiny. It's very interconnected properly. And you know, then we, that that's an anchor for us to have that discussion. I like the simplicity of that a lot. Mm -hmm. and, 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 yeah. and, and I think like I'm saying that in, in the context as well of saying, maybe, maybe you want to kind of shrink that screen. But like you said, there are people when they see that they're like, yeah, that is utopia. Like you, you're preaching to us. So for, for a lot of us today, I, I dig it, you know? Yeah, I dig it a lot. I, I do too. I like it. It's cool. I, I think, think um, people just like to see people just like to see, you know, if, if it can kind of resonate like, oh yeah, that is our, <laughs> that is our leaky boat with duct tape, like plug and holes. And that's the, that's the yacht we want to be on. Like you, you're kind of showing them the painting that, right? 
Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, so you're, yeah, I've you're even, like, you're like, you're like, uh, you're, you're steering the ship, you're plugging the holes, you're helping them show, like, you're taking all these complicated processes. I mean, you're essentially a consultant, you know, in a way, and telling them, like, fix this, 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 here's how you fix it. Now, here's how you track the results of that. And, you know, just keep this steering the ship, right, if you will. Um, and technically, you know, whose job is that? Well, it's technically the CMO's job, you know, you're yeah. coming in there. I can help you do your job, right? You don't have to give me credit for it, but I'll help you keep your boat floating and your, your sales and marketing alignment in sync and moving in the direction that it needs to go so that you look great as a CMO and we have a really strong vendor relationship with you moving forward where if there's an issue, we're going to be the first people you call to come in and help you get things back, you know, in alignment. I don't know, just a thought there. If you're talking to a VP, you're speaking their language. Yeah. And, and that's often what's happening, right? You're not, you're never going to go to the CMO, you know, you get to that strategy pillar there. Well, that's my job. Obviously it's your job, right? Like we're, we're not going to say that you're not doing your job, but it is translating what you're doing, filling gaps in what you're doing and making sure that there is that straight line alignment right between the tactics of what what just because you define to go to market strategy doesn't mean that's what your the marketing team is deploying against <laughs> to be to be perfectly honest it's, it's not oftentimes they're just again sending emails and doing things that don't align with that strategy holistically so it is filling those holes in the boat for sure yeah yeah i think if you take anything away from it it would be this it would be like what asia said start out with selling that utopia like, I mean, immediately hit them with, this is how, I mean, maybe it is that boat concept, you know, um, and, and really show them like, this is what we're going for. Now let's walk you through how we got to that point. Like, like Patrick will say, and I keep saying this and he's just not saying anything on this call, <laughs> he's like, just pulling threads, right? You're pulling the threads of the pain and showing them like you have all these issues, maybe wrapping in some discovery questions and stuff there as you go along, but ultimately what you're driving towards is um is is trying to explain to that executive that you're going to help them do their job and give them all the credit for it essentially so you're solving all these problems for them but you're not coming in there trying to to take their job if you will um you're just coming in there trying to right the ship and you know and, and send it on its merry way um because it's hard it's hard when you i mean justin's talking about you know, this is something that he would be in a prime position to do for the sales tech back side of things, probably marketing too, coming in there and saying like, okay, you've got all these systems, but this one's not talking to this one. This one, the like, there's no API integration. You're going to have to build something out there in-house or bring in another product for it or whatever. And how do you map out how those systems talk to each other and work together, blah, blah, blah. Someone needs to do that on the marketing side too. So it, it makes sense. Yeah, for sure. How much of that utopia needs to be visualized with metrics to your point, Justin, right? Like if, if you're painting that picture of utopia, is it, you know, are seeing, because I think a lot of times metrics get glossed over because you don't have a foundation for them yet, right? Like, oh, you're going to get 10 X this or 30% this, like, you know, at some point you're like bullshit, right? Until you get into that trust scenario where it's like, this is who we, this is how we help. These are the problems you solve. This is where we've seen it before. And this customer saw X, right? Where it's very specific as opposed to just broad sweeping statements of yeah. 10 X. It's much easier to sell SaaS with like consistent median averages. Like, okay, these 200 clients, I'll see about a five X return or whatever on unusual when you have a big portfolio of SaaS clients with services, it's very bespoke and a snowflake, but it would be cool to see a testimonial. Maybe if you have your, all the clients you've worked with the last six years verticalized, and then in the deck, you pull out the testimonials for the framework for like it's FinTech and you have a few different financial mm -hmm. services companies you've consulted on their Marketo instance and you pull out the quotes. And for the first client, it was a story about integration and headaches and efficiency. The next client, it's, you know, straight up saved us 5 million because they figured out, um, 
you know, maybe some unique ways to leverage the people process in tech. And then the third is maybe it could be soft, it could be hard. Some people are analytical and they really want the, you know, make money, save money, reduce risk, comply with the regulation piece. And then a lot of people just want the fluff and stories and emotion, right? They, they, they uh, love to buy, but hate to be sold. So, I mean, for services, it's a unique beast. I don't know if you have that big of a repository, even if you anonymized it, you didn't mention the client, you could just say, you know, large FinTech client, <laughs> say, you know, yeah. glowing testimonial. You probably have this knowledge base. Do you have all this that you could use? Yeah, we do. We've collected benchmarks for a decade. So, you know, we have a lot of, a lot of yeah. stuff we pull from and often do in, in storytelling, right? Um, yeah. You know, even I can, I can go to the, go to the appendix here. Um, there are a few, uh, there's a good one. I thought maybe there was a good one. Yeah, like if you look at this one, right? Like you're talking yeah. about, a, again, there's, there's a lot of words on the slide, which, you know, I don't think this represents all that well, right? And again, to your point earlier, people just start reading and this, this is better served as like a send behind, right? But the idea is old legacy manufacturing company, never done any marketing, sales driven organization, you know, all the typical stuff, right? Marketing is a pretty picture department, blah, 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 blah. So we focus on one segment of the market. We do your segment messaging positioning analysis. We create some tactical things. You see landing pages, uh, ads, blah, 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 blah. You know, net output, 15 million pipeline, 300 MQLs, you know, things that people, you know, attach themselves to. Again, Which I don't vertical like the way that visually. I can't. This is I'm manufacturing. Manufacturing. So, Te yeah. Technology and manufacturing. I would pull this entire slide into a paragraph, you know? Yeah. Within you know, what 90 be, day, yeah. You know, what'd be interesting, Justin and, and Josh, is maybe taking the, the concept of taking them from the, like, we know your current state, here's the potential future state, and then maybe the slide proceeding or maybe the paragraph in that same slide starting to be a lot, you have that story in there. So, you know, we know this is your problem today. We know this is where you want to be. And this is like an actual, you know, example of somebody in your vertical or industry where we solve the same problem. And here's two quick metrics in that one tight sentence or paragraph. Who would yeah, exactly. want to do what's yeah, on I've been the saying slide? That. Yeah, right. Yeah. I've been saying that for years, right? Like, <laughs> you know, everyone, we, we talk about benchmarks. Everyone wants to see someone like them, you know, blah, 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 blah. At the end of the day, the benchmark could be as simple as that, right? A company that kind of looks like you, tastes like you, smells like you, saw a lift in this metric. That may be enough to get the initial to get the initial story across. Instead of you know going down this line of, show me how your entire funnel performs. I'll benchmark it against you know a thousand customers. You know that's a big lift and one that people oftentimes aren't ready to go down until you're actually like in an engagement. To be honest with you. Yeah. yeah, I I really like on this slide where to take for talking points. Like if you know, you know, this you have like some of these raw statistics in um, the industry vertical or or a similar company to the the one that you're presenting in front of. You can take like just that the bullet points on you know how an unsophisticated marketing org generated 15 million a pipeline with one full funnel campaign, boom success story, and then bullet point out the you know, the within 90 days, the results bubbled up to blah, 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 like just that bottom paragraph where the results are, um, that would be huge because then you could talk through kind of the story of this with the executive, like all the details behind it and how that kind of aligns right. with what they're going through or even talk about it and put them in that shoes. Like, you know, this is what we would do for you essentially and walk them through it. Um, I mean, you could turn this slide and simplify it and then use it just as a talking point. They're not reading everything on the screen, but they're actually engaging with you. And like one of the things that I think Patrick does really well, which would work, I think, really well with executives too, is when they start kind of bubbling up some of these things that they're, the, the curiosity or the pain points or, um, you know, you dr like drill into that. Like, well, why is that a priority focus for you? And then just let them go. And what are you guys doing currently to help alleviate that concern? You know, and and that's executives want to they want to talk and figure out, you know, the resolutions for for everything. And so if you simplify it by simplifying your slide presentation and just drilling into like use case stories 
and really, really cool discovery dig questions with the executive, I think you're going to nail it, you know? I mean, you know your stuff. You've walked this walk, you know? And just go in there and, and own that. I, I like it. I like I like the the kind of the vibe, too. I see we're uh, a few minutes over our, our an hour allotment. Um, thanks. I know Justin and, and Patrick had to jump, so thanks, Asia and, and Amy and Josh for, for jumping on. But Josh, the, the thing I'll always extend as well that we've had with every other um, presenter is often we'll, we'll circle back kind of one-on-one. -on -one. So I know Patrick and Amy have circled back with people and said, hey, like, if you want a couple other set of eyes on like an iteration of this, happy to give more feedback. Yeah, for sure. I appreciate y'all jumping in and taking some time. I know it's often a little weird to jump into our weird world because most of you are SaaS sellers or software sellers or hardware sellers, but I, I do appreciate it. And, you know, I, I get, I'm, I'm, I, I feel a lot of the things that you're saying. So thank you so much for your time. For sure, you man. have to come on guest coach too, Josh. Yeah. Come back. And, Pardon? You have to come on as a guest coach and sit in, sit in our shoes and do this because you've got, you know. Yeah, happy to do it. And Asia, thank you Happy for coming on. No, this was this was actually a lot of fun. Um, so I'm looking forward to doing it again sometime. Thank you. Yeah, well, have, absolutely. Have fun in, in the Georgia mountains and uh, have a great weekend, y'all. Thanks. Bye. All right, thanks so much. Have a good one. Take care. Take care.